Hi. Uh, this video is going to be about Holy Spirit baptism and speaking in tongues. And it's going to be a little bit different to what I normally do because I'm actually going to be answering a question that somebody sent me yesterday. Um, and a lady called Melanie, Melody sent me this um, message and I'm not going to read all of it. I've just picked bits out um, that are related to what she's asking. Um, and she says, I am a new baby Christian at age 53. God woke me up out of the new age last Christmas of 2015 after I begged him in prayer to show me his divine truth as I was tired of all the conflicting truths of the new age movement. He brought me back to his son Christ. I had Catholicism in my background but you know that did nothing for me. I got baptised two days ago, praise God, but I didn't receive the Holy Spirit baptism even though I was prayed over. I'm half born again, sob. Have you received the Holy Spirit baptism? Do you think that you could do a video about that? And do you have your own heavenly prayer language? Which I guess I, I think she's referring to speaking in tongues. God bless you, much love in Christ, Melody. So I'm going to start with the first question of have you received the Holy Spirit baptism? So I'm going to um, share my story. So as many of you know, if you've watched my testimony, um, when I was born again, the night that I was born again, when I said the sinner's prayer, um, I saw demons leave my body. I saw dark demonic spirits leave my body, sort of shapeless void spirits leave my body. And I believe that I was baptised with the Holy Spirit at that moment. I Not as they were driving out, but I believe that I was baptised with the Holy Spirit when I first believed. I believe that that was the time when I received the Holy Spirit. And I believe that is why I was able to see the demons as they left my body. Um, and I genuinely believe that the moment that I invited Jesus to be my Lord and Saviour, when I prayed that prayer, I believe that is when I was baptised with the Holy Spirit. Nobody laid their hands on me. I just received the Holy Spirit when I first believed. And if we look at um, Acts 19, 1 to 6, it's uh, Paul in Ephesus. Um, and I'm going to read uh, verses 1 to 6. It says, And it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples and he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what then were you baptised? They said, Into John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptised with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one that was to come after him, that is Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came onto them and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. So notice here, a lot of people say that if you have the Holy Spirit, you will speak in tongues. Now, a lot of people do speak in tongues. Like here, they started speaking in tongues. But notice they didn't just speak in tongues. They started speaking in tongues and prophesying. There's a lot of people that say, you know, unless you speak in tongues, you are not saved because you don't have the Holy Spirit and all sorts of things. Um, but they never talk about prophecy for some reason. Like here, they're, they're speaking in tongues and prophesying. There are many different manifestations of the Spirit, many of them. Um, loads of different spiritual gifts, like in first, I'm just going to say this and then go back. So 1 Corinthians 12, um, 1 to 11, it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed and no one can say Jesus is Lord except the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are var varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. 
To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For, for one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the workings of miracles, to another prophesying, uh, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another ver ver uh, various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit who apportions to each one individually as he will wills so if we if we look back on on paul where it says you know did you receive the holy spirit when you when you first believed when you believed you know they could have received various different gifts it just so happened that when he put his laid his hands on them they were started speaking in tongues and prophesying they could have received wisdom, they could have received knowledge, they could have received faith, they could have received all sorts of things. It just so happened that they started speaking in tongues and prophesying. Now, when I started to believe, I could see into the spiritual realm. That night, when I prayed that prayer, I was able to see demonic spirits lead me. I don't believe that that could have happened without the Holy Spirit. I don't believe that, like, well, anyway, either way, I could see demons leave me and from that moment, from the next day forward, from well, from that moment onward, the next day, for example, I could tell that there was a huge difference. I could tell that um, God was speaking to me. I'd be walking down the street. God would like start speaking to me, leading me to like randomly give money to some stranger like that never happened before. Like that is the Holy Spirit. Like the Holy Spirit is the teacher, the comforter. You know, he teaches us all things. It says in, in John 14, 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So Melody, if you think that you are um, half born again, it's not true. Because just because you're not speaking in tongues or something, it doesn't mean that you, ha you don't have the Holy Spirit. And also, if they prayed and they laid hands on you for, for the Holy Spirit, you, you know, you, you may well have the Holy Spirit, but it might just not be speaking in tongues. You might have received wisdom, knowledge. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things. If you have been taken from the New Age movement and are now walking with Christ... Unless you have the Holy Spirit, you won't learn anything. So if you are learning stuff about God, if, if, if scripture is coming back to your mind, that is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings to remembrance scripture and teaches us all things. So it's not true that you're half born again. And it's not true that you don't have the Holy Spirit unless you, you know, manifest in speaking in tongues or prophesying when somebody lays their hands on you. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure that you do have the Holy Spirit. If you've come from the New Age movement and now you're walking in Christ, I can imagine that you have massive discernment. I can imagine that, that that did not come easy. That didn't come without the Holy Spirit ushering you into the truth of God. And now that you've decided to walk with Christ and you've got baptised, you know, unless you... Don't feel any teaching of God or any leading of God um, unless it's literally you, you're reading the Bible and they're just words to you. Like, you know, God isn't saying a thing through his word to you. Um, then you need to worry about not having the Holy Spirit. Because even having wisdom, even having faith, even having knowledge, even having, you know, any kind of leading, teaching, um, you know, the Holy Spirit r reminding you scripture uh, that you can stand on. You know, that's all signs of having the Holy Spirit. And so I wouldn't worry about not having the Holy Spirit just because you didn't start speaking in tongues after you were baptised. Um, that's what I wanted to say. And also, there are many gifts that might manifest later. So your second question, Melody, um, was do you have your own heavenly prayer language? Um, I'm, you know, talking about speaking in tongues. Now, yes, I do speak in tongues. 
But I didn't start speaking in tongues until the very end of me living in China. So I started speaking in tongues about a year and a half ago, and I've been a Christian for uh, over three and a half years. So there were over two years, or around two years, that I didn't speak in tongues at all. But I definitely did have the Holy Spirit. 100%. I would be walking down the street, God would lead me there. You know, um, I had been involved in uh, driving out a demon. I had seen into the spiritual realm. I'd had dreams. I'd have, I'd have, you know, I would have visions and, the, um, and all sorts of stuff. I definitely did have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was teaching me, leading me, leading me away from sin, leading me into the things of God, um, giving me faith, giving me wisdom, giving me knowledge, um, reminding me about all sorts of scripture that applied to my situation. I definitely had the Holy Spirit, but I just didn't speak in tongues. But I did start speaking in tongues after somebody imparted the gift to me in China. So at the end of my trip in China, um, I was speaking to somebody on Skype and before I started speaking in tongues I had a very sort of like I think because I didn't have the gift I had a very like critical view of the gift because I was kind of like oh I don't speak in tongues well I don't need to speak in tongues if God doesn't if you know I kind of had this almost like rebellious attitude like well if God hasn't given me the gift of tongues then it can't be that amazing like I don't care I don't care I don't need the gift of tongues it's fine it's fine um, so I kind of like had this view like, um, you know, speaking in tongues is like a rubbish gift anyway, like why do I need it? It's fine. Um, especially like with scripture, for example, like 1 Corinthians uh, 12, 28. And it, sa it says, for example, and God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping administra uh, administrating and various kinds of tongues. So I'd look at the gift of tongues when I didn't have it and I was like, well, you know what? Like, I would rather have prophecy. I would rather do this. I would rather do that. I am going to seek the higher spiritual gifts. Um, I'm not bothered about this tongues business. That's like at the end of the pile anyway. Um, so I kind of like had this, this sort of view of tongues. And I think I was just a bit jealous or a bit ignorant. I just didn't see the point of it. You know, I'd see people babbling which was babbling in, in, in my view. And I was like, well, you know, that's not helping anybody, is it? Um, so I sort of, I, I wasn't really bothered about the gift of tongues. But at the end of my time in China, um, I was speaking to somebody on Skype and he was really saying that like, when he received the gift of tongues, it really helped him in his walk with God. And, um, you know, he wanted to impart that gift to me. And that is biblical, by the way. If we look at Romans uh, 1, 11, when Paul is talking to people in Rome, he says in Romans 1, 11, I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. And obviously we saw before, you know, um, when, when the hands were laid on, um, I think it was Paul again, but I'm not really sure. Yeah, um, Paul uh, laid his hands on the people in uh, Corinth. And again, like they started speaking in tongues, they started uh, prophesying. So he said to me, I want to pray for you to receive the gift of tongues. And I said, okay. Um, so what he did was he prayed in tongues over me on Skype. He was um, a guy in America. He prayed in tongues, yeah, he prayed in tongues on Skype. He also prayed um, for me to receive the gift of tongues. And he sort of said to me, you know, have you actually prayed to receive the gift of tongues? And I did like some time before, but, you know, I kind of didn't get it. So I became a bit bitter. Um, but, you know, I said, you know, I'm willing to I'm willing to pray to receive the gift of tongues because the Bible does say eagerly seek the spiritual gifts, you know, especially prophecy. But, you know, the rest as well. So I said, you know, I'm willing to I am willing to uh, pray for it. Um, so he prayed over me in tongues and in words, I believe. And he said to me, the way that I received the gift of tongues, I was praying for the tongues. I was praying and I just started to say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I would just say the word Jesus for a long time, praying that, you know, the gift of tongues would come. And um, he was saying Jesus and he was just calling on to Jesus, um, you know, and praying for the gift of, 
uh, tongues. And eventually, um, he, w he just started to speak in tongues. And I said, okay. So he prayed over me. After that, that evening, um, I went and said the word Jesus. You know, I called on Jesus. I was very genuine, like I was calling on Jesus. I was praying for the gift of tongues intentionally. And I was repeating the word Jesus um, many, many times. And uh, I started speaking in tongues. Okay, then I was like, oh wow, it worked. And so I called up my friend, again on Skype. I prayed over him to speak in tongues. I prayed over him in tongues. Um, and I said the same thing to him. I said, um, you know, that this is what I did. I said Jesus many times. I called on Jesus. I prayed that I would receive the gift of tongues. And I started praying in tongues. Then about half an hour later, my friend messaged me saying, it works, it works. Uh, I've started speaking in tongues. So... The gift of tongues was imparted to me, um, but it was two years after I believed that I originally had the Holy Spirit. So, it, you know, we don't necessarily re receive all the gifts at, at once. There are, you know, there are some cool spiritual gifts that not many people have, like interpretation of tongues. Like, how cool is that? Like, I've heard of like one or two people having this, but I've never met them before. But imagine if like, I don't know, if I had the gift of interpretation of tongues and like, loads of people like I don't know I could hear like someone there like speaking in tongues and I could hear everything and understand what they were saying that's like incredible you know there are so many different spiritual gifts and um yeah I think I think there is such a huge emphasis on speaking in tongues and yes it is great it is amazing I believe that it does intercede uh, for you on your behalf especially when you don't know what to say and you can speak in tongues randomly when you're walking down the street and you can be thinking about something else or you can be speaking in tongues around your house and, you know, um, building yourself up spiritually and all this is great. But there are so many manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Um, so, you know, in, in relation to Melody, who, who messaged me, um, I would not say that you are half born again. If you believe that Jesus died for your sins, if you believe that he rose again, if you believe that he sat at the right hand of the Father right now, if you've repented and you've turned away from your sins and you're now walking in, um, you know, in, in the ways of God, you're following Christ, um, I believe, you know, I don't know, like you don't have to speak in tongues, um, you know, I believe that if you have been prayed over to receive the Holy Spirit, I believe you have it. You might have even had it before then. I believe you have it. But I'm, I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, if, if, if you have no leading from God whatsoever or you weren't genuine when you believed or, you know, all kinds of things, then, then, then maybe there is, you know, some, some confusion. Um, but I would not say that you are half born again. You are born again when you leave your life and you start walking with Christ and it is a sincere um, new life. Then you are born again and you will receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit, um, the Holy Spirit is given to those that ask. So if you've asked for the Holy Spirit, you will have it. You will have it because, um, you know, the, the Bible, I don't have it. Um, on hand, but it says, you know, if 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 your son asks for an egg, uh, you don't give him a snake. So how much more will the Father give you the Holy Spirit if you ask Him? So if you've asked the Holy, you know, God to have the Holy Spirit, you have it. Like, how much more will you have it than you, you know? Um, so don't worry about that. If you specifically want tongues, you can pray for tongues. You can pray for specific spiritual gifts and they are amazing. They are great. They're fantastic. Um, but the Holy Spirit is so broad, like even faith, even wisdom, you know, all sorts of things. These are all manifestations of the Spirit. Um, so please don't think that you're half born again because it's not true. Um, so yeah. So I hope that this video has helped you, Melody, and maybe anybody else that is watching. It's very long, uh, so I do apologise. But yeah, thank you.